everybody, Sarah here. So today is going to be a short video on the different types of Oka teas that we have in corn snakes. Remember to like and subscribe and share and all that fun stuff. I want to take a minute to thank all of our members. Uh, you can click join under any video to become a member. Uh, thanks so much members for being a member. Uh, it's because of you guys that we have everything on this channel. All of the money that you guys help put into the channel goes straight back to you guys. So thank you. I really appreciate it. And I'm sure that everyone else in this community thanks you too, because without you, this channel wouldn't be what it is. So thank you from everyone to you. Also, thank you Reptilinks for basically sponsoring this channel. You can use my code sarahsnake 27 at checkout at reptilinks.com. It gets you $5 off and I also get a percentage. So uh, it helps you, it helps me. And there's also a $100 money back guarantee if for any reason Reptilinks don't work for you. Also remember I've written two corn snake books that are available on my website right now, sarahsnakeshop.com. You can check that out if you would like. So I'm going to start out with the very first line of Oka teas, and that is the Love line of Oka tea. Kathy and Bill Love were some of the first people to really get into Oka teas. They're the ones who helped make the hobby what it is, or make it a hobby in general. So Kathy Love's original Oka teas were caught around or in the Oka tea Hunt Club in Jasper County, South Carolina. She selectively bred them because she liked the large blotches, the thick saddle borders, and an overall like clean pattern and bright colors. So the original Oka teas were pretty basic as far as Oka teas go. Today we have all of these like crazy versions of Oka tea, but the originals just looked like really, really pretty normals. Uh, shortly after, Lee Abbott wanted to have his own line of Oka teas. And back then when there were very few breeders around, certainly very few big breeders around, um, everybody sort of had their own line of whatever was going on. So we, we had our JMG line of corals and everybody had their own line of something. And so since we had the love line of Oka tea, well, we got the Lee Abbott line of Oka tea. The Abbott line of Oka teas took what was great about the love line Oka teas and accentuated it. So Abbott started breeding for even more bright, specifically red and orange colors, uh, and the thicker saddle borders. So a lot of our like love line Oka teas uh, are going to be brightly colored, but not quite as like red. And then a lot of your Abbott lines are going to be a bit more red and like intense orange. There are of course Oka teas that do not have this intense coloration though in the ground color, especially. And a lot of them have this more of like a, like a tan, tan ground color. But they're still Oka teas and people started calling them buckskin Oka teas. So buckskin Oka teas are ones that have you know, your typical like oak tea, thicker borders, and usually they have red or orange saddles, but they also have this like, well, very deer skin colored ground color, and those are your buckskins. Now, typically none of these three are ever going to really interact with each other, um, except for the fact that Abbott Line Oka teas originated in Love Line Oka teas. Uh, your Love Line Oka teas are kind of going to be one thing, Abbott Line is going to be another, and then Buckskin is going to be yet something different. There was also another line of Oka tea, uh, very briefly, known as the Beatty Line of Oka teas, and um, Ryan Beatty was the one who came up with these. They look similar to Buckskins, and I think that's why they probably didn't take off. They're ground color was uh, a, similar to buckskin, but just maybe slightly more yellow. Um, and so they were overall a bit more brightly colored than a buckskin, in my opinion. And I personally like them better than buckskin. Don't get me wrong, buckskin is my favorite, like, kind of popular Oka tea. But the Beatty Lane Oka tea, in my opinion, is, like, one of the best looking types of Oka teas out there. Now, another sort of line of Oka tea that can kind of be mixed and matched with any of the others is the Extreme Oka teas. Uh, Extreme Oka tea, uh, from what I have noticed, really started with Don Soderberg um, selectively breeding for the thicker and thicker and thicker borders. And an Extreme Oka tea is going to pretty much have completely blackened out saddles near the end of the tail and have like really, really, really thick thick black borders. The reverse extreme Oka teas that come out of these lines, like the AML versions, are almost completely white when they hatch. Like their saddles are almost completely whited out. And of course you can have like an extreme love line Oka tea. You can have an extreme Abbott line Oka tea. And the last one that I really want to talk about is the Miami Oka tea, which I hate that term so much because I wish that they would just call them thick bordered Miamis or like silver Oka teas or something. Cause like we have buckskin Oka teas. Um, so just like call them 
like silver oak teas or, or something like that to indicate that they have a lighter ground color. So a Miami, as many of you know, has the like silver or just gray, pretty much colorless background color that might have a little bit of melanin in it, it causing that like grayish tone. But Miami is a completely different like portion of the states from Okatee. Um, so saying something is a Miami Okatee just doesn't really make sense, even if that is sort of the look you're going for. So basically they are Okatee Miami phase. Okatee phase, Miami phase mixed together. Um, I do love them. I think that they're beautiful. It is one of my favorite looks in any kind of Okatee anything. And of course, this whole video is talking more about Okatee phase at this point uh, than Okatee locality. Uh, I've talked before about the difference between phases and localities. Localities are like if you go to Miami, Florida and you catch a corn snake, that's a Miami. If you go to a breeder who has never owned a wild caught snake and none of the snakes in their collection or whatever or in this line can even be traced back to Miami, Florida. Um, it just looks like a Miami. That's a Miami phase. And it's similar with all these other ones except for keys. You're not really going to be able to selectively bred for keys look that well. But especially when it comes to Okatee and Miami, these can be selectively bred looks. And so we have Okatee phase, which is one that looks like an Okatee, but doesn't really have any background in the Okatee Hunt Club. And then you have the Miami phase, which may or may not have any lineage actually in Miami, but it kind of has that silvery ground color anyway. So that's all for this video. I hope that you enjoyed. I will see you soon for a new one. Like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. Thanks for watching.